saw a motor. The motor arrived from Canada in just two weeks. There's an invoice included. It's the Saw 20 motor. It has an electric saw pattern. The saw blade pattern looks really cool. Shipping costs are high because it's coming from Canada. It's the lightest and most powerful motor that can be installed on a Brompton. It's unbeatable. It's a 500 watts direct hub motor. It's produced by a motor specialist company called Crystal Light. We also developed and sell a front wheel through axle motor. The front wheel provides strong traction on mountain terrain and snowy roads. You can only purchase it here. There are no similar products. This looks like a cooling fluid magnet injection hole. It seems like we need to cover it with a sticker to prevent moisture ingress. There is empty space between the coil and the motor magnets. Hub motors have difficulty dissipating heat due to air. We use liquid magnets to fill the empty space between the magnets and the stutter. It allows heat generated by the stutter coils to quickly transfer to the motor cover. It's only compatible with direct drive motors. It's said to achieve a 30% temperature reduction. It's a very interesting idea. The reason for doing this is that as the temperature rises, the magnetic force of the magnets weakens, and if it exceeds about 140 degrees, the coils can burn black. Unfortunately, the motor power cable is not included. It needs to be purchased separately. Order completed. Wow, I really like this. It's so compact. There are no free gifts or promotional items. We use the Pro Wheel Builder Calculator. The measurements can be found on the video board. Accept click. Calculate click. Spoke length calculation is complete. Generally, the standard method for fitting spokes onto a flange is the cross pattern, where the spokes are inserted alternately from left to right. If the rim is too small or the hub flange is too large, the spokes will only be installed in one direction, from out to and on the flange. It's a 36-hole 16-inch rim. Prepare the spokes and nipples. Next, let's check the spoke installation sequence. First, install the spoke from flange side A out to in direction. It's a radial spoke pattern without any cross. It's very easy. Install the first spoke next to the valve hole. Jump one hole at a time and install the spoke in the fourth hole. Jump three holes and install the nipple. Use tape to mark the valve hole. It helps with wheel alignment. Jump three holes and install the nipple. The first pattern is complete. Flip it over and start installing side B spokes. Use a box for cable protection. In the second step, install the spokes on flange side B out to in. Install next to the initially installed spoke. Jump 
jump three holes and install the spoke. The second pattern is complete. In the third step, install the spokes on flange side A out to in. Install flange side of spokes from out to in direction. Install them one by one. The third pattern is complete. For the final step, install the spokes on the flange side B out to in direction. This pattern is actually not necessary if you install all the spokes onto the rim before assembling it. Install the remaining spokes in all the holes to complete the wheel. Pattern complete. Wheel alignment. Using a spoke wrench, you should be able to determine the start and end of wheel rotation while tightening the nipples. Attach a sticker-like tag to the spoke next to the rim valve hole. To tighten the spoke nipple, turn it clockwise. Tighten all the nipples while leaving a one millimeter spoke thread. Start aligning horizontally by tightening the nipples. If the rim touches the arm, rotate the nipple by only 90 degrees and move past it. If it touches again on the next rotation, adjust it then. Firstly, we will explain the principle behind adjusting the rim left and right. By tightening the right drive side spoke nipple, the rim will move to the right. Conversely, tightening the left non-drive side spoke nipple will move the rim to the left. It is important to note that over tightening the left spoke nipple can cause the rim to move too far. Releasing the nipple will cause the rim to move in the opposite direction. In summary, the principle is that the tension power balance of the left and right spokes moves the rim and aligns it to the center. If the rim touches the arm, rotate the nipple by only 90 degrees and move past it. If it touches again on the next rotation, adjust it then. Reach the target tension of about 80%. Using a dishing tool can save time during the process. Adjust the initial lateral tolerance to less than 1 mm. Once you have done some horizontal alignment, proceed to vertical alignment. Let's learn about the rim vertical alignment method. Secondly, let's take a look at how to align the rim up and down. By tightening the peripheral nipples together, the rim will move towards the hub. To move the rim in small increments, tighten or loosen the nipples at least 360 degrees. 
Loosening the surrounding nipples together will cause the rim to move away from the hub. Vertical alignment of the rim only works when the left and right spoke tensions are adjusted together. Vertical alignment takes a long time. Reach the target tension of 90%. Adjust the vertical tolerance to below 0.7 millimeters. If tightening doesn't work, you need to loosen the section where the rim enters to make it movable. Budget rims are not perfectly round. Be careful, this is a case where precise alignment is almost impossible. It can cause excessive tension increase. For budget rims, we apply a more lenient tolerance in the welding bead. Now, let's inspect the wheel center using a dishing tool. When assembling wheels, the center can become slightly miscellaneous due to errors in the wheel truing stand. To correct this, a tool called a wheel alignment gauge, or centering gauge, is used. First, let's set up the dishing tool on the non-drive side. Attach the gauge securely without any gaps. Now, fix the gauge in place. Move the dishing tool to the opposite position. The measurement shows a gap of about 4 millimeters. To calculate the rim displacement distance, 4 millimeters division by 2 equals 2 millimeters rim displacement distance. Now, we only need to move the rim by 2 millimeters. Adjust the position of the rim by tightening the left nipple once and loosening the opposite nipple once. This will allow the rim to move without changing the tension of the spokes. Before starting the job, label the spokes and check the starting and ending positions to ensure accuracy. Start the inspection again from the beginning. There should be no gap on the drive side, and if the measurement distances on both sides are equal, the rim is perfectly centered. During the wheel building process, we check the wheel centering. Check by hand if the spoke tension is generally consistent. If you have a tension meter, you can use it as well. However, Regular meters may not work well due to short spokes. Don't worry, the nipples won't loosen easily even if you don't tighten them too much. Once again, align the wheel horizontally and reach the target tension of 100%. Align with an error of 0.5 millimeters or less up, down, left, and right. The wheel alignment job has been done excellently. The wheel is completed within the acceptable range of errors. The wheel building is finished. It turns out the spokes are just the right length. Prepare the 16-inch rim tape.
Install the rim tape. Now, you just need to prepare the tire. Subscriptions, likes, and comments are greatly appreciated as they greatly support video production. Thank you for watching.